as you wish. You are far from your post, Inquisitor. What brings you here? We are in a sanctum holy to Woodica. There are others like it in service to the other gods. I come here often to pray for her counsel, and in this space I may be assured that she hears me. That woman sought only to destroy the foundations of peace and civility that my people sacrificed everything to build. It has many uses, but its purpose is to bring structure to the chaos that surrounds it. They are monuments to Woodica's greatest servants among my people. I hope to join them myself one day, but my work is not yet complete. The Inquisition was based on the need to cut the flesh from a rotting wound. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? Something men can turn to in their darkest moments when their days seem only like bridges from one tragedy to the next? Our gods are all these things. We are in a sacred place within earshot of the gods themselves. This is not the time. You've been through much these past few months. You will return home and you will rest. When you feel you have recovered, you may rejoin us at the trials. The Inquisition is far from over, and I will have need of you. There are many who continue to spread the lies of the apostate. The Inquisition will not end until we have pronounced judgment on all of them. How did you find it? Another in a string of acts of petty defiance. For all her knowledge, she always preferred spite over reason. That woman did more in her misery than most accomplished with their clear, ignorant minds. If only she had obeyed. Such a waste of rare talent and intellect. What of your cohorts, then? They have followed you to their deaths. Is it loyalty that brings them here? Or is it as my agents suggest, that they have no direction of their own? 
You. You worshipped Aethys, did you not? Your spies are good. What gave me away? The cape? Yet when your god needed you the most, you chose your country. We were being invaded. Not by anyone who was acting like a god. Then I should think your hometown gave you a hero's welcome when you returned. Well, they made cake. And I think you can expect folks to get jumpy when the gods aren't there to reassure them. Maybe if they weren't all too busy trying to kill each other. The gods argue over how best to prevent Kith society from destroying itself. These... Disruptions would not be necessary were mortal instinct not so diseased. You built a weapon that delivered exactly as promised. I served my goddess as you did yours. Yet the other builders were slain. Eleven of a dozen. Why not you? Were you somehow different? Redeemable in your god's sight? Whatever desire I had to be redeemed in her eyes was weakness. Purged by the Watcher's sight. Or was it merely that your goddess wanted you dead as well? And your delusions of importance prevented you from seeing the obvious? A whore's beguiling charms, nothing more. But the spell's broke now, Theos. The trial's over. I know friend from foe. And I've come here now to see a foe repaid. You were able to destroy a god because another god wished it. Without her hand to guide you, you could not strike at a god any more than you could strike the sky. You are impotent. And not just from the pox. State your name and purpose, young acolyte. My name belongs to the gods, in my hand to their service. And I'm going to purge it of your stain. You serve none but yourself. Without contact with your order, you can have no higher purpose. Only the base concerns of the flesh. You have cast yourself from our ranks. No. I've risen above them. I'll take the leaden key and lead in a way that you, who remained nothing more than a slave to the gods, never could. A leader without insight, directing an organization that does not question. Quite a vision, Initiate. I am told you are the last of a great line. As are you. But my line will continue unbroken. My people entrusted me with their wisdom, and I ensure that their legacy flourishes. Can you say the same? All legacies end in time. I regret that ours ended with me, but there was nothing I could do. Yet the legacy of my people lives on. Through their own ingenuity. Yours was a lesser people that chose a leader unprepared to lead. They have no one but themselves to blame. And the lost gift bearer. You have been many things in this life, all because you fear what you really are. I know what I am. And it's the searching that got me there. But it was the promise of redemption that led you down that course. Where would you be if you thought all was lost? What a pity. You must not think much of people if you feel like we're all so hopeless. Or perhaps I have merely witnessed the alternative. You are here because you are lost. The gods cannot reach everyone, I'm afraid. May you fare better in your next lives. 
I gather you have had your soul awakened. Why else would you shadow my footsteps like some stray mongrel? You think I have something to offer you, but our business was concluded long ago. I answered your questions once. That your soul is not fit to accept the answers is of little concern to me. I lied to no one. Not to you, not to anyone. The gods are real. They are everything we need them to be, and the world is better for it. Guilt is a disease of the mind. If the mind no longer believes it is guilty, then that is as good as absolution. The heart of this country has skipped a beat, nothing more. I have done far worse. I plunged the peaceful kingdom of Telosus into civil war. I slew the monarch of Desantio, whose people never knew hardship under his rule, and replaced him with a cruel despot who brought them to ruin. When plague arrived at the great city of Arborensis, I saw to it that the cure did not. They piled their dead outside the city in heaps that rose above their walls. Precisely. Their histories are droplets of water, falling into an endless sea. They are significant unto themselves for a moment, and then they are gone. There was a time, back when your soul was still a shapeless mist, when the world believed only in false gods. Thousands of them. Gods that told them to take slaves. Gods that told them to make war upon their neighbors and devour the slain. Gods that told them to burn their children alive and cover themselves in the ashes as a sign of their faith. But all that changed when they learned of the true gods. Our gods. All those misshapen, bestial instincts melted beneath the radiance of our gods' majesty. You could see it in their eyes. That dull emptiness replaced with the glimmer of a kindled spark. No person can overcome his instincts by himself. Only with the aid of a god, someone he will respect and listen to, even against his every impulse, does he stand a chance. Have you imagined this existence? The one the apostate would have created? We are not all so virtuous as she. Without our gods, the most wicked, the most tyrannical, they would take that power for themselves. But more than that, it would be a hollow existence. All mysteries forever unanswered. All purposes constructed from meaninglessness. No endings to bring closure. Only a wheel, turning without mercy, grinding our spirits to dust. If you would welcome a wretched and lifeless existence, then by all means. But I will not see the rest of the world saddled with such a curse. All I have seen, the millennia of experience. I will not be dissuaded from this course. This is the only way. You have not thought this through. There is no leaving this place for you. I allowed it once, but you have made it all too clear what a mistake my mercy was. With your soul and thousands of others, I will see this world purged of its suffering. Hear me, Woodica. Your servant calls for aid. 